more cardio than I am now. In fact, I was doing more exercise and was younger and was drinking less. It's really hitting me how amazing these are. I mean, it is the X2. It is the DNA force. It is the male vitality. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Infowarslife.com, free shipping, infowarsstore.com, 888-253-3139. And we will be sold out of the silver at current sales rates by tomorrow. We ended up getting in a little bit more that they were able to get to us, but it may be next year before we get more silver. It was seven, six or seven weeks. It took 16 weeks to get more DNA for us. It's set to sell out this week. The way most people work is if you're about to sell out of something, you jack the price up. No, I I just want to blow it all out and give back to everybody that's given to us. Plus, it's a win-win. Thank you all for your support. Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. Free shipping and discounts on all the pro-gun, come and take it, Molon Labe shirts. We've got two new belt buckles out that we only make in America, 500 of each. Molon Labe with an M16. Great way to meet like-minded people and talk about come and take it. And the new Molon Labe 50 Cal uh, Spartan come and take it. And again, I come up with the con, the 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 concept. Our great graphics, one of our great graphics people, uh, Cade, who's a freelancer, been working with us for eight years. He does a lot of major rock bands and Willie Nelson stuff. Uh, he comes up with uh, the actual design off of my concept. And this is the second in the series of Molon Labe, only 500 of each, and the others have sold out. The George Washington, I would think, would be the best seller. That still hasn't completely sold. I think there's like 20 of those left in the in the bronze. The, the, I, I like the nickel bronze, and so does the public. Uh, even though it costs a little bit more, that's what everybody, all, that always sells out first. Uh, but the Molon Labe's last time sold out in about a month. These are selling out right now. The ultimate Christmas gift, uh, the camouflage shirt. Let's see if it's still sold out. I never asked. Go ahead and scroll down, guys. Click on the camouflage Molon Labe that I came up with. And, and I don't say I came up with to brag. I just let you know it's an Alex Jones designed shirt you might want to know. And to see if they've got any sizes left. Because I know they sold out a large and extra large a long time ago. Okay, they're back in. They're back in. In fact, double check with Weldon. That's good news. I didn't know they were back in. I, I, I knew that was sold out. I've never worn a shirt and had so many compliments. And and what does Molon Labe mean? Or, wow, that looks good. I mean, women uh, absolutely love the shirt for some reason. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm not trying to sell it, uh, you know, off that. It's just the truth. I don't know what it is, but women love it. It's kind of the special forces type where it's got the American flag in black on the arm, and it's got the modern digital camo uh, set up. Because I've worn other camouflage shirts out and around, kind of the old classic jungles pattern, and I just don't get the comments this one gets. Uh, and men just love it and know what Molon Labe means, or they ask, what does that mean? Uh, this is the shirt back in for Christmas, InfoWarsStore.com or MadeIn1776.com. Okay, uh, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to settle down, and I'm going to go to your phone calls, and then... We're going to get into district order to pay transgender students $75,000 for not letting the person use the girl's bathroom. Uh, that's what's really important, folks. Meanwhile, NATO and Russia move closer to war. We're going to get into Eric Garner, I believe manslaughtered by the police. And by that, I don't believe they meant to kill him, but they still should have known it's like you punch somebody and they hit their head on the cement and you didn't have a reason to punch them, you get a manslaughter charge. But they could actually do a pure murder charge because, I don't know, you could argue they knew what they were doing when he was begging for his life. And let me tell you, the reason I blew up yesterday and then I had a headache all day and I, I didn't sleep well last night and I was very upset this morning, I have a lot of empathy for people. And the Thomas Kelly video and this Garner video... I psychoanalyzed today. It hit me when I was working out on the elliptical why I'm so angry. When you hear somebody begging for their life who hadn't done anything, it makes me angry. And I know why people get angry. But 
thug criminals that are just pure racist who want to piggyback on people that are angry are the scum of the earth and are actually aiding and abetting bad cops being able to murder people. But man, I tell you, listen to these guys beg for their lives while these cops get off on killing them. It's, it's just, it really makes me angry. And the answer is getting control of our police departments and getting these people trained. And if somebody wants to be a killer, like this guy that says, I'm going to go up here and kill this homeless guy, and he goes up and kills him, and the cops give him an award for it, those are some sick freaks in Albuquerque. And we've interviewed, it's got to be like seven or eight, so many whistleblowers. I said, we're not the Albuquerque channel. I had to tell the reporters. I rarely get involved because they're all real smart and have good instincts. But I said, listen, too much Albuquerque, two or three times a week isn't, you, you know, it's too much. We're not an Albuquerque news station. We're a world station. I said, do once a month condensed reports with whistleblowers on the latest police murders and, and out-of-control psycho behavior. That's more effective anyways at telling the truth. Show the pattern. Don't just every day have the Albuquerque police doing new horrible things because the public doesn't even perceive it uh, as Albuquerque. They see it as cops. And cops' biggest problem is cops because they've been federalized. They've been given hardcore killer training. Yeah, great. Killer training is wonderful if you're in the military and you're about to go into a foxhole and turn on the killer. I get it, folks. Believe me, I get it. But you don't turn on killer with some guy with his standard going with his hands up just because he's big. You're intimidated, so you murder him and show everybody how tough you are. If you want to do that, go join him. You know, martial arts, uh, ultimate fighting stuff. Go get involved in, in the Golden Gloves. Go fight other tough guys. Okay, don't sit there and murder innocent people because you're so tough. You got something to prove. Let's go to John in Texas, then Jay, Dave, Eddie, and Peter. John, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Welcome. You know, back in 1964, my dad gave me a copy of a book called None Dare Caught Treason by John Stormer. Yes. And anyway, in that book, they had a, a, a position paper that one of the Dulles brothers, who was a, mo a member of the Roosevelt administration back in 1942, World War II was just kicking into high gear, and they laid out their long-range plans, and he said one of the plans was they're going to merge the communist and the capitalist system together, and it's been done. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the Carnegie Endowment and was uh, declassified in hearings by Anthony Sutton, the congressional expert, in the 70s. But So what you're saying is public. And also that I always thought that the, the collapse of the Soviet Union was a fraud because it was always part of the plan that they would come on board the, the, the global government, you know. They just had to wait for the right moment, and then they, then they launched it, you know. That's right, brother. Uh, there's a new article out by the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR.org, that Kit Daniels is going to do a story on today or tomorrow where it openly says, use a dizzying array of dangers from the resource competition and overfishing to climate change to bring in a justification for global takeover a la quote the report from iron mountain unbelievable admission by these people uh, it is just so creepy how out in the open they are one of the things they've been using is gradualism that's the tough thing about this is they've been using gradualism a little bit at a time where it's hard to, to wake up people you know that uh that they, they, they figure over the long term that they're going to win, but we'll go, if we have to do five steps backward or go 10 steps forward, they'll do it, you know? And it... I agree with you. And now, though, see, we've gotten to the emerging point, the flashpoint where all the gradualism finally gets so intense that, oh, by the way, I don't need Congress anymore. By the way, I'm just taking your guns. By the way, we're, the NSA is just spying on you illegally. Uh, by the way, there were cancer viruses in those shots. By the way, the flu shot did kill a bunch of people. That's the point they're getting to with everybody right now is just flaunting it in our face. Great to hear from you, John. Dave in Pennsylvania, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yes, Alex. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jesse Ventura was on Coast to Coast AM, and a caller called in and mentioned it to him about the guillotines that are at these Army bases, and Jesse had no idea about it. And I was wondering if he could please pass that information on to Jesse. Well, I would love to. In fact, I was supposed to call him last week and never did it. I'm calling him today uh, about some other stuff we're working on. Um, but it's a perennial thing 
because they introduced a bill decades ago in the Noahide laws to start using guillotines for execution, and then Christians saw that as, as revelation coming true. So it's kind of one of those urban legends you can't get rid of. Uh, the military bases are openly training to mow down crowds of peaceful people in what they call zombie training, zombie wave attack training. Uh, and, so, and, and they are having rendition and secret grabbing of citizens So and the NDAA. So that's all real. Uh, and that stuff does go on at black sites or ghost sites, as they call it. Uh, but they generally don't... Um, they generally, when they decide to kill you, they like beating people to death. Uh, or they waterboard you till you die with your head in a bucket. Uh, they really don't use guillotines, but I appreciate your call. But, but, but I could talk to him about that. If, you, if you've got info on guillotines, please send it to me. Uh, Eddie in New York, you're on the air. Yes, hi, sir. I want to talk about the supposed shootings in Ferguson with the police officers. And um, I haven't heard anything on mainstream media about it. I only hear you talking about it. And I remember Chikari Jackson was saying that there was gunshots all night long. So was Joe Biggs. But there was two cop cars 